If you uh, look back to 1945 and look at the principal crises in which we've been involved, almost all of those have come because um, the communist world has appealed to force or to the threat of force. The Greek guerrillas, the pressure on Turkey, the attempt to maintain their forces in Iran, the Berlin blockade, Korea, Cuban Missile Crisis, Southeast Asia. Now, the extraordinary thing about uh, this period is not just that the United States and others have had to meet it with firmness and with sacrifice. We've taken 160,000 casualties since the end of World War II. But in meeting those crises, we've tried to act with a prudence which kept open the possibilities of peace. For example, we did not convert the Greek guerrilla affair into a major war. Uh, we used an airlift in Berlin rather than engaging ground divisions on the ground to keep open the possibilities of peace. We had, for all practical purposes, a nuclear monopoly at the time of the Korean War. But we took substantial casualties trying to settle that without embarking upon a nuclear war. President Kennedy, in handling the Cuban Missile Crisis, went to very special pains, as you will recall, to keep open the doors of a peaceful settlement, even though it was determined that the missiles would have to go. We waited more than four years in South Vietnam before striking the North, four years of intensive infiltration of men in arms from North Vietnam. So there has been a, a prudence and a responsibility about the em employment of force in this post-war period. And the reason for that is um, uh, that um, we are deeply and um, passionately committed to the organization of a peaceful world. 